Here you see a member of the Anguirus family. All of man's instruments of defense have no effect on him. Electricity, fire, cannons, shells. Nothing seems to get him. We were desperate, helpless, as we watched in horror while an animal breathed his dreadful fire upon us and ravaged the city with the force of an army. There was simply nothing that science could do. Thousands of people fled in terror as the monster continued his disastrous onslaught. Railroad stations, even trains, crumbled under his powerful legs. All of man's genius seemed pale and weak in comparison to the colossal strength contained in this monster's body. He had never seen anything so strong, so astoundingly powerful. He could lift up in his jaws an entire train car and swing it as though it were a toy, dropping it to earth with awful consequences. He moved on trampling people to death as he walked. Hey, I'm Kyle. Thanks for joining me and Andy for the Legendary Creature Podcast. So if you're listening with your kids or your conservative grandma, maybe don't, because we swear. Or you can check us out on YouTube, because hey, that's no place for conservative old women or children. Fuck yeah. All right, Kyle, boot up the save file. Let's let's pick up where we left off. <laughs> yeah, because we ended abruptly last. We time. ended right before the Planeswalker boss fight, dude. This is the last place we can save before we take this shit on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know. Uh, okay, so do you want to start from, you know, kind of the same decorum? Like, do you want to eliminate by color, or what do you want to do? Yeah, let's or go through. We just go through them. Let's just go through the co- go through them by color and. And bang these out, dude. Okay. Give me a white planeswalker. All right. Mono white planeswalker. Mono white planeswalker. Uh, let me give you this one. So uh, for context, for people that don't pay attention to spoilers at all, uh-huh. uh, these new planeswalkers have static abilities on them, which is, which is kind of some new thing in terms of design. Yeah. It's not just a, an activated ability. Uh, so let me give you this first one. It's, Teo, the shield mage. Mm. Uh, two and a white. The static ability on this is that you have hex proof. Uh, it comes in with five loyalty counters, and kind of the trade off for some of these planeswalkers is for having these static abilities is that some of them don't have an up activation. Yeah. So, short of proliferation, they're kind of. Yeah, they're headed out. They're if destined you use their to only be activated a number of times. And yeah. it seems like there's a lot of like three CMC, five loyalty. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like the fitting seems regular. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, Teo is three CMC, five loyalty, has one activated ability of you can remove two loyalty counters and create a zero three white wall creature token with defender. So you pop out a total of two walls over two different yeah. activations. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So Arcades. Yeah, Arcades is probably one of the few places you're if not the only place you're going to put this guy i don't know like there there might be some there are instances of things giving you hex proof right and and that's really dependent on how your meta game is going okay for for being an old brago player would you be into this i mean resetting it because you have hex proof you yeah. reset it and you just keep pumping just out a wall. keep pumping out a wall if they were flying you'd probably be all over that if they yeah were flying i think that's the, walls. that's the thing I, I don't know it's uh even then, that would be a hard ask because there's just not a lot of space for things that are kind of cute like this. Yeah, and even Arcades, like I'm not so sure about that. There's a re- there's some really good walls at the three mana slot that you probably want to be resolving, like yeah, uh, you know, Wall of Denial. Yeah, rather than pushing him out. But, yeah, you know. All right, that's a good kind of a baseline of what the kind of planeswalker. So that's kind of what you're see. looking at. This this particular planeswalker probably isn't going to see much commander play at all. But okay, you know, here it is. What's the other white one? Uh, should we do so? Okay, so I'll do the Wanderer. So this one's three and a white. Uh, prevent all non combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. Huh. Uh, it comes in with five loyalty counters. So that, that static ability prevent all non combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. So, like, Blasphemous Act is not going to be able to pop off your creatures, right? Mm hmm. Uh, all that strange damage that can come your way. 
It doesn't stop the life loss. Like you can still lose life. Right. For right. torment or exsanguinate. It's not going to stop that. But, uh, but the damage in those types of things are going to be stopped. And then the activated ability is minus two exile target creature with power four or greater. So you have some spot removal available to you with this as well. I actually like this one. I can see, I, I can definitely see putting this in places for sure. Yeah. Commander. I can see this one getting put to use. All right. Give me another one, dude. Give you another one. Oh man. We're just going to pop through these. Yeah. Eh? You're going to do the white ones, man. <laughs> so we actually have two Gideons. I'm assuming one of these is in some deck or whatever. Okay. So uh, let's go with Gideon Black Blade. So one and two white. He comes in with four loyalty counters. Uh, has static ability of as long as it's your turn. Gideon Black Blade is a 4-4 four, four human soldier creature with indestructible and that's still a planeswalker. So pretty typical for yeah, Gideon. Pretty typical Gideon effect right yeah. there. Uh, it also He also says prevent all damage that would be dealt to Gideon Black Blade during your turn. Okay, so these are static. These are static abilities. Okay. Activated abilities, he does have one that allows him to go upward. So plus one, up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of vigilance, lifelink, or indestructible until end of turn. Mm. And then an ultimate of exile target non-land permanent, which you have to remove six loyalty counters to do that. Ah. <laughs> yeah, this one's this one's kind of rough. I don't like it, it, it. It's. I mean, say one thing, like, it is three converted mana. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's not, you probably shouldn't be expecting a bomb out of a three CMC Planeswalker, right? Sure. Uh, but even still, like, he's not doing a ton for you. I mean, he's a 4-4 four, four sold, 4-4 four, four for three, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. Sure, but what, what <laughs> format is this where we're evaluating that as a So enough? it's it's, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like, I yeah, don't know. can't, like, I can can't try to... equip him. He keeps dropping everything you put on him because he keeps flipping back to that. <coughs> um, the prevent all damage is only during your turn, so I don't know. I mean, I'm just not... The Wanderer, like, she wipes out big creatures. This guy's ultimate where... How much loyalty does he come in with? He comes in with four. So, so you've got to have two activations prior to that ultimate before you can exile. Yeah, so three turns away before yeah. you can exile a single non-land permanent, where in the color typing he is, like... Yeah, you've got some, some good exile You've got some really good options there. All right, yeah, so... So Gideon Blackblade's just kind of like... I, I can see people putting him into decks because they're fond of Gideon, but... I'm not seeing it. It's just not... I'm not seeing results. Not really good for Commander. Okay, so there's the another Gideon. I don't... Sure. Yeah, so Gideon the Oath Sworn. I don't even have this one on my sheet. Really? All right, what does he do? So I'm guessing, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm guessing one of these comes with some deck that goes along with the release. So Gideon the Oath Sworn, four and two white, uh, comes in with four loyalty counters. Whenever you attack with two or more non-Gideon creatures, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of those creatures. Uh, has plus two for an activation until... End of turn, Gideon the Osworn becomes a 5-5 white soldier creature token that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. And then an ultimate of exile, Gideon the Osworn, and each creature your opponents control. Huh. So instead of the spot removal with Gideon Blackblade, we've got a board wipe as yeah. an ultimate on this one. Yeah. Uh, again, it's going to be... This one's four turns away because he comes in with four. So he's slower, but I guess this kind of his big thing is a little more relevant to what we, we care about in this format. It's going to beef up his static ability, beefs up other creatures that yeah, attack, yeah. right? Yeah. So, ah, I don't know. I've just never been a fan of the Gideon's Planeswalkers. I just don't feel like they do enough. Yeah, right? so I've been playing around with eight and a half tails and... I have two of the Gideon in mine. So one is the one from Amonkhet that can target a permanent and that permanent deals no damage Yeah, until my next turn. So it, it, it holds. So there's a game where I kept having to push it onto your Perforos to kind of keep people from losing myself, <laughs> uh, from losing life. Yeah, you saved the, saved the table a lot of damage. Yeah. And then the other one is that he has a... I guess it's kind of an ultimate, but you can do z you can just pay do a zero loyalty ability that you get an emblem that says as long as you control a Gideon's planeswalker, 
um, your opponents can't win and you can't lose. Right. So an eight and a half tells like I can continue to grant him protection, <laughs> you know, and get a lot of things in front of him where you're just not able to get at him to remove that one. Yeah. And then the other one I have is the one from gate crash and it has a loyalty. It, you can increase its loyalty to however many creatures a target opponent controls. So if someone's like tokening, he can jump up, like he'll become like a 13, 13, uh, loyal planeswalker. So even if he does take damage, as long as I have that emblem, like you really do have to sink a lot of damage into him. And then the other thing is, is that I can animate him or turn him into his, into, into the creature that he becomes. Yeah. Become. Turn him into your classic beefcake warrior that he's always doing in almost all of his cards, <laughs> uh, then grant him protection and throw him at somebody. So make one of your permanents white, make him protected from white and then attack. Yeah. So, uh, but still like really not to get ahead of ourselves, but the, the white planeswalker they spoiled for the modern, uh, horizons. That one seems like a better idea for w what I'm trying to do because oh, yeah. her emblem is basically a worship. Yeah. You know, that does make a lot more sense. Yeah. To me. Like she's, I, so those are the only Gideons I've ever used are those, those two. And really like it didn't win me the game. You managed to get around him regardless of how big his loyalty was. Like, yeah. He, he get a, haze of rage along with a, uh, uh, did I, did I, is that a game that I had Talrand out? Haze of Rage and Talrand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> yeah, you did it with your Will and Rowan Kenrith, so you had reduced the cost where you were able to buy back Haze of Rage a bunch of times. So they were just, there was a bunch of tokens with very large powers on them. Yeah. Like way bigger than, you know, our boy can get. Uh, all right, we, is that it? Is that all the white ones? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, like, there are some planeswalkers in this set that I'm, pretty jazzed about there's nothing in these white ones that i'm like whoa crazy i can see the wanderer i mean I, if I, you have a way to continue to bring her loyalty back up somehow you can just yeah and if not you still get two it's three mana to potentially get to exile one creature <laughs> so for sure exile one creature yeah um and then hey you might get pick off one more well yeah i mean f with the wanderer you're for sure exiling two right yeah well, for sure, one, I guess, if people attack it, yeah. Yeah, so people are going to attack it, then yeah, you might not ever get to that other part. And then they're just stop and just write out that static, I guess, for the non-combat damage. Yeah. That's what I like about these three. I, I actually like this design of a three CMC Planeswalker that, that you can get your two uses out of it, and then it just stops at one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, they can attack it, but at least it's just something you can rely on for a little longer. I think the you other know? thing that this design kind of begs is that it, it, I think with planeswalkers, you're obliged to use their activations. Like you, you just kind of feel like you should with a lot of these, you don't necessarily need to, right? No, you could get the wanderer out. There might not be any hot targets to remove, but you want that static ability where you're preventing all non-combat damage. Mm -hmm. Right. So kind of an interesting shift in design. The Wanderer is the one I'm most interested in. The others, I'm kind of like, eh. From white? That's your that's your white? Yeah, the, as far as the white, walker white planeswalkers go. All right, blue time. Blue time. Give um, it to me, baby. Let's talk about Kasmina, a, a enigmatic mentor. All right. So she's three in a blue uh, for a legendary Kasmina planeswalker. Spells your opponent's control, or spells your opponent's cast that target a creature or planeswalker you control costs two more to cast. And then, yeah, she's your, she's your kind of like this template that we've been seeing this, uh, she's a four she's CMC four for, for five. five. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with the Wanderer, four CMC for five. It's the shield mage that's the other, is the other guy. Um, but yeah, uh, you can bring her down by two and create a two, two blue wizard creature token and then draw a card and discard a card. Um, there's some places she goes, right? I mean, I don't know where. You don't think so? Like you're just kind of maybe maybe the Adelies. Like if there's an Adelies deck, I can see wanting to kind of just grab some more <clears> wizards <throat> and use it to loot because you've got four mana. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I run Nabon, and I don't. I the draw card to draw a card and discard a card is what I'm really into. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I want. Is the is the yeah? Card I mean, draw. with Nabon, the uh, the. You're not getting anything from those things entering, right? Like, no, unless like, I, yeah, because I can't, I don't think I can. Like, they're extra bodies for a zombie if you're that person. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there is that too. I forgot about a zombie. Yeah. 
because I think we're just kind of focusing on the wizard token here, but the draw card, discard a card is is yeah. nice. Yeah, it's some filtering. And then that weird like soft block of, you know, you spells your opponent's control that want to target a creature or planeswalker costs two more to cast. So, eh, I don't know. Yeah, in my Nabon list, I think my list is too tight to put something like that in here. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Yeah, I, mean, I can I absolutely. Don't, I don't know understand. where to. I don't know what to take out to I mean, push or put her in. One one of the things to point out, I suppose, and and, and she's maybe a good entry point for this mm -hmm. is. Let's just acknowledge the obvious that this set is going to make Commander really hot for Super Friends decks for a, for a little while here. Sure, and she's she's going to be one that people are considering for that, right? Like if you're running Super Friends. You want to make it harder for people to reach those planeswalkers. Uh, you do she, want ways to block. Yeah. She's she's going to, yeah, help. You really with, are looking for blockers a lot of time. Help with blockers and help make it harder in terms of cost for people to just spot remove planeswalkers. Okay, as well. so for Will and Rowan Kenrith, would you put this chick in? I I think the way that I have it built, I would probably consider it. Yeah, because you you like the tokens. I do I do like the tokens. Uh, I usually have a full enough grip that I'm fine with the draw discard. Okay. Uh, Will is pretty hot for just filling your hand up anyways. So right. you're, you know, she's just helping you filter a better hand any, anyhow. Okay. Uh, what about Narset Parter of, of Veils? So she's one blue, blue, uh, for a legendary planeswalker Narset. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So that static's pretty dope. Ugh. But you can pay to look at the top four cards of your library. Uh, you may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put that into your hand and then put the rest at the, bot at the bottom of your library in a, in a random order. So she's, she's uh, yeah, so that goes by, down by two and yeah, she starts with five loyalty. So you can get two of those uses out. Yeah. Um, that is definitely going to be somebody people want to attack into though so they can turn their... They need to get their card draw back. Yeah, they do. They really do. Like I... I don't know when you when you cap people's draw it uh, moods shift. I like this card. I do. I I just it's just an easy target for people to deal with. They they we're gonna be throwing creatures at that to get rid of that. And I think that's an interesting thing to look at in terms of evaluating these new planeswalker designs. Right? Mm -hmm. Is is they behave sort of like an enchantment that gives that you can an addition. Be attacked. Th yeah, like th that can be attacked, and it has a couple additional activations you can use. But some of them, if they're passive enough, they'll probably leave alone. Yeah, like I don't see people getting like bent out of shape over Casmina. Like, oh my god, I can't target your shit without paying two. You know, like so all so it only really affects their targeted removal. Um, but this is a little different. Like, yeah, this one's gonna a lot get in of the way commander of decks. Game plans. Like all the good ones anyway. They have pre-programmed card draw in them. Like for me, I at least try to get myself you know, depending on the commander, like if the commander themselves draws you cards, I, I'm not super aggressive about it, but you know, around 10, around 10, yeah, 10 sources that will, that will get me in deeper into my deck. And this shuts off 10 of my cards, 10 of your cards. Like you and I would be interested in taking this away. Oh yeah. Especially if, you, especially if you're, uh, um, an opposing blue deck. <laughs> like, oh yeah, for sure. It just really pulls the strength out for sure. But there's also, you, know, so you kind of I mean, might, you might be hesitant to bring her ability <clears throat> down because you're like, I don't know, I don't she know. needs I to stay. She could survive the attack. You need to have something in front of her. Would be my guess. A lot of times with Narset, like because she's one of those cards that's going to get attention from your opponents. Yeah, and I guess you could be more casual about evaluating this and say, well, how many cards did I block before they finally got rid of it? That's a good point. You know, like that's yeah, they point. did get rid of it. Is it any different than any other kind of card? draw denial type card in any deck i guess other than the fact that every cre every type of deck can reach it that has a creature available to them you know so mm -hmm. i don't know i i'd have to see this in action but i i really do like the static like it, it it's a good one it is a good one it is good all right and then um we've got our boy right the cat's pajamas himself <laughs> uh jace so this one's a little I mean, it's a little nutty, honestly. So it's one blue, blue, blue. Um, so it says, if you would draw a card uh, while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Cool! Labman 2.0! So that's his static, but he comes in with for four loyalty, and then he says, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. 
draw a card, so that brings him up. And then his ultimate is draw seven cards, then if your library has no cards in it, you win the game. It's going to take a little while to get there because he comes in with four right and the other one goes up one. Yeah, so I think the reason they put that into um, his ultimate is because he wouldn't be present to... His static is now gone because you've kind of wiped him out. Yeah. Like if you get him to eight... Yeah, you need to get him to nine to pop that off to help you win the game. Yeah, that makes just, I guess, damn sure the double lab man effect, I suppose. But yeah, so I think a lot of people are drawing... The connection to to the lab man thing with the, hey I have no cards left I win the game kind yeah, of stuff yeah so in decks that run um I don't know enter the infinite some kind of like overdraw mechanic with uh mind over matter and niv miz at one point or a zombie like these this might be of interest to them yeah um depending on how often they feel like they need to hit that so I guess now you have two targets in your library that that have a lab man type effect on them outside of that I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I'd put him in there. I think people would be so. They're not. Here's like my thing about this is that the type of thing that deals with him isn't. It doesn't overlap the type of thing that deals with your lab man. Does that make sense? Like all they need to do is attack into this one. Well, that's yeah. And that's that's the problem here, right? Like. Like it's not something I, like, that you can. Oh, they ate removal. Yeah, like I, I, had, I guess hero's downfall. I had but, a, I had a lab man victory recently and. I've had other games where it was looking like it could happen. I think you had one too. One of our gameplays where you were like ready to get a lab man to kind of counter somebody's somebody's group hug drawing our decks out kind of a thing, right? And uh you know like the the circumstances in which you can get it cuz you're only playing a laboratory maniac to win the game, yeah, right? It's not like, like if it happens, <laughs> you're not going to put it out there and be like, well, it'd be crazy if I get there. I mean, we'll see you guys. Like, yeah. like you're playing it because it's, it's, it's time to win. And yeah, you have like dramatic if, scepter set up. And, and if and somebody has, out, you know, a counter spell, if somebody has spot removal, they're going to use it. And yeah, with sure. I, I probably should have said like a counter spell answers both of those. Yeah. Like Jace, which is attacking adds, adds a different thing. Like you can just ta- attack into him, which is, People are going to have creatures on the battlefield more readily than they do usually a spot removal spell in hand. Yeah, and then his other, his up loyalty is just kind of like, I, I would imagine you're targeting yourself with that, I suppose. The mill two, draw one. So yeah. If you have a lot of graveyard synergy there, like I could, I could see that being something to capitalize on. Um, what about him like in, in Congress with other, like a Planeswalker f- f- friendly deck? So like a, like a what do they call him super friends let's call him that do you think that he fits into that i you like know are the there f- any other is there any like planeswalker strategy that would draw you out into a lab like that i i can't see any other reason to run him you want to win off of kind of that effect right so, it's his so, static and it's his ultimate yeah he two 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 paragraphs in his you know i mean two sentences in his in his like text I can, box I can want see, you to draw your library. Yeah, I can see putting him into a, a mill deck is just kind of like a well. If I mill myself to a point, maybe I'll use this. Like I can see doing that. You know, like I don't know about the super friends thing. I don't think we've seen super friends at our table enough to really. True, say we, you and I are pretty bad evaluators of super friends because it's not something that's super popular in our play group. Yeah, I mean we've seen it some, but I don't think we've seen the extent of what can happen with a super friends deck. Uh, so I'm not, I, I mean, I can see instances where they might be drawing a lot of cards, but I don't, I don't know what, if there's decks built that way to that end of like, let me get a lab man win off of my super friends thing. Okay. Hit me with the black planeswalkers. Let's, let's get away from Jace for once. <laughs> I was going to say there is it. another Jace. I think we've done our time with Jace. Oh yeah, you're right. Do you have that one? I yeah. Don't so even... it's Jace arcane strategist. So that one was wilder of mysteries. Oh we were just God, talking Jace. About. Okay. <laughs> so the arcane strategist, sorry, I've got like allergies, like been pummeling me the last couple Dude, of days. everybody does um so arcane strategist four and two blue he comes in with four loyalty counters his static ability is whenever you draw your second card each turn put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control it's very particular hmm. uh up ability is dry card and an ultimate of minus seven Creatures you control can't be blocked this turn. I don't know if I said it. He comes in with four loyalty. 
Uh, God, that's really this is some weird stuff for him. This is, this is yeah, it kind of is like it's very creature oriented, isn't it? Yeah. Like so, our second draw puts a plus one plus one counter on one target creature you control. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm just inclined to say this isn't good, Great, but it is different. But it is different because you're paying six mana for something you can activate to draw a card. Okay. Like. And then you potentially have a moment where you can say... That's quite the deal, dude. Six mana for one new card? I mean... <laughs> oh, wait. We're not in mono white. Okay. Yeah. And then the potential that you can ultimate and get all your creatures unblockable. What not there a... Isn't there a Teferi that has a down ability that gives your creatures unblockable? Uh, Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't really been looking at the, the the different teferis because they've had like some of those uh bonus deck planeswalkers that either you and i just ignore them or uh, it's not teferi it's not teferi what am i thinking of that make them unblockable venser venser it's venser yeah venser venser has a has a middle ability that makes all, uh, all yeah. your creatures unblockable when you really don't want to rush that ultimate that just pops you the so fuck it's just off. i don't know like if we're comparing this to things like it just just doesn't fit in it's you know Let's move on. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's start with the Black Planeswalkers. Hit me, dude. All right. Okay. So let me hit you with uh, with Davriel, Rogue Shadow Mage. Dude, who is this guy, man? Who yeah, I don't know. This guy looks fucking dope. I like the art on some of these hey ones there, where, where the like, what are you doing? Man? The vapors are like going over the top of their name on the card. Uh huh. That's pretty cool. Uh, so two and a black comes in with three loyalty counters. Uh, so at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, Davriel Rogue Shadow Mage deals two damage to them. So Kay. that's the static ability. Okay. We have a minus one activation where target player discards a card. And that's it. That's it. Man, what a cool character for not that effective of a card in this in this format. Yeah, it's just not quite enough damage damage for all the work you got to do to get somebody down to yeah having basically no so hand post mind slicer post uh myogen right we get two damage yeah <laughs> on on them yeah it's um, just not quite enough for command where you've got things like megrim that you know anytime they do discard anything they just lose to or or liliana's caress yeah and then his loyalty reduction is yeah he just has a target player discard a card I'd probably be more into this if it was all your opponents. I yeah, in that case, yeah, yeah all all opponents or even everybody, even if you were included in that, because sure. it's like whatever. Um, we have a dis a pretty heavy discard deck in our in our group, Tiff Snath of the Guilt Leaf deck, and yeah, we've had some experience, and I I had and she a, produces a lot of tokens to block for this guy, but I st I don't see her <laughs> take what what would she take out when she's got like yeah, there's other things that are way better, like it's it's. Yeah, Necrogen Mists, like there's just all these things at the exact same slot that... Yeah, I'm like Bottomless you know, Pit and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, Bottomless Pit is just, wild, even if, you know, you're... I mean, eventually it, it hits you, but... Painful Quandary. Okay. Um, yeah, it, 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 like I can see people being drawn to this one. By the I, way, is he an Aetherborn? Is that what he is? Is he like a grumpy, gaunty planeswalker? Oh, I'm not Did sure. Did they talk about where he's from at all? I actually haven't looked into, into the history of Davriel. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, give me another one, dude. Okay. Well, let's let's give you one that everybody's gonna see when they crack open booster packs. Yeah, I'm just predicting this is the guy you see, and I have no reason to say that. I can just <laughs> I can just see this is the one that comes out of every pack if I ever open him. So yeah, remember every pack has a planeswalker, and it's probably gonna be this uncommon, Obnixilis the Hate Twisted. Yeah, remember when you pull your when you first see this guy out of your booster pack, and you're like, you know, they said it. There's the first one. Where's just, the just second? The first time you see it, just remember. I'm just predicting it, dude. Legendary Creature Podcast told you so. Dude, it happens. Like, okay, so for Dark Ascension, it was, what did we keep getting for every Dark Ascension? It was that. It was that angel. It the was Requiem that, angel. The Requiem, yeah. For whatever reason, every Dark Ascension booster pack, it had one of those in it. And then for Avacyn Restored, it was that, um, that weird like undying one one zombie that has like all the like all the people beating him up <laughs> that was almost in every booster for for some reason uh the blister core weird or whatever was returned to ravnica like for whatever reason that was like in every goddamn pack i opened 
Like I can just I don't know for some what is it the towering meander shell that was the one that yeah, showed up then, in every Tarkir booster. Oh, that's right, the towering meander shell. Yeah, then like in in like the uh, the dragons whatever. dragons maze, there was always one of those uh, mana rocks that like suck dick. Oh, a mana lith. Like, is that what you're talking about? No, the ones that, the Ravnica ones. They were were they the signets or whatever? Not the signets. They were the clue stones. Clue stones. Clue stones well, that yeah. nobody would use. Yeah, I mean, there were like two of them in every pack. Anyway, just don't buy booster packs because you're a commander player and you just need to buy the singles. It's gonna be Omnixilus the Hate Twisted. So it's Omnixilus the Hate Twisted. He five mana comes with five loyalty counters. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Omnixilus the Hate Twisted deals one damage to that player. Okay. Minus two is the activated ability. Destroy target creature, its controller draws two cards. So, I mean, yeah, if you're needing to throttle redundant. more damage, Nakusar is going to use it, right? Yeah, like, Nakusar is going to want this guy. Uh, yeah, that's that's where this that's where he goes. If 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 you want more of those, so unless you have effects. multiple Nakusar decks, don't buy booster packs because you're going to get multiple <laughs> Obnix. I have multiple decks. <laughs> They're exactly the same, <laughs> you know, one of them's even foiled out and I'm actually working on foiling out the second one <laughs> and they're identical. That's fucking stupid. All right. Give me uh, the last black one, Andy. Oh, I, I'm doing the honors for this. Yeah, do it, dude. Oh man. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's the Liliana of this set. Um, Liliana Dreadhorde General. So probably her most metal title, her, her most metal post post comma title. It's four black black for a legendary creature planes or legendary planeswalker Liliana. Whenever a creature you control di- or whatever a creature you control dies, draw a card. Create a two two black zombie creature token to bring her up by one loyalty. You can bring her down by four, and it says each player sacrifices two creatures. So, Jeez. you know, if you have enough to creatures, you could actually just draw two cards right there with it. And then um, her ultimate is down nine. Each opponent chooses an opponent they control for each permanent type, and sacrifices the rest. Um, she comes in with six loyalty. Uh, yeah, she's pretty good. She's very good. So and- she hits a lot of the things you can ask for in a Planeswalker, right? Um, she starts with a good amount of loyalty, so she can kind of take a beating. She puts um, blockers she, in front of she herself. She puts blockers to slow some of that down. Uh, her middle ability punishes your opponents, so y- yourself too, but... You know, I guess if you've been able to kind of go between the two, um, her middle ability is kind of a bigger ask. It's it's down four. Yeah, that so throttles, you're, throttles you hard. But you're, you're ma- making people sack two creatures. True, true. Yeah, they are. Yeah, true. And then yeah, her ultimate. It's just. Oh my god. Yeah. Chooses a permanent they control of each permanent type and they sacrifice the rest. Yeah, so everyone, ground zero for everyone. Everyone everywhere is going to do everything <clears throat> they can to keep her off that ultimate. For sure. Yeah, I th- I think she's going to be uh, present in a lot of Super Friends builds that are, they're going to, like that ultimate is going to be a win con. Yeah, that art is, the art is really metal. Uh. So l- let me give you a scenario okay, that, dude. that told you that, uh, you know, I'm going to say Tasa Karlov is going to be pretty hot for some of these cards. Uh-huh. I think this is one she would be hot for. Like, let's, let's just imagine that you've got Tasa Karlov and, and, you know, you have a couple creatures out and an edict along with Liliana. Like you, you could be in a position where you're making people sacrifice six creatures by popping off that middle ability. Oh, because you've got something like the... Like if you... Let's say you've got Grave yeah, Packed out. I get out, it. I get it, yeah. And you sack off your two creatures. Well, now everybody has to sack four to your Grave Packed Tasa c- c- uh, demand. And then right, plus, also, plus, plus the two Liliana's from original Liliana. ask. Yeah, Like wow. that's, that's an instance where one activation that's is... That's pretty much a board wipe. ...going to make six... That's a fucking board wipe. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And if you're, you know, if you're doing things like, like I said, like I've said before, if you're doing kind of doom traveler afterlife type stuff, uh, yeah, you'll oblige it. You'll, you'll get yourself into a position where you've gotten a bunch of tokens out of it, out of that exchange. And meanwhile, everybody's short six creatures. She's dope. There's a lot of places I think that she can do a lot of work for people, but yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably consider putting her in, in Verena too. Yeah, that ultimate is just backbreaking. 
It really sure. is, right? How are you going to recover from that, dude? It's just like, watch this guy crawl back out with all that. It's just, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, that's the type of thing where it's like, you don't technically win at that point, but everybody is, they're just, they should scoop. A concerted effort of one, like, I don't know, unless they have something just really big out there that they're hanging on to. Yeah. You know, like yeah, some Eldrazi, I guess. All right, well, we're on to red, dude. Let's do you red. Know, generally not that great for our format, the red planeswalkers typically. Yeah, although, they usually don't go like the distance the, with damage, right? Yeah, the Kaladesh Chandra was was okay, depending I've on where she was put, put in. Use. Yeah. Um, all right, let's 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 do... Can I do mine, dude? I, just, I love this guy. I love this guy as a character. So it's Sarkhan, um, the Masterless. So, legendary creature Sarkon for three and a red and a red. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. So they kind of, you know, if you control dragons, like if you kind of pillow for it a little bit. Yeah. Not pillow for it, but, you know, deter. They're going to deal damage. Um, if the dragons somehow have death touch, uh, you can bring his loyalty up by one. It says until end of turn, each planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 red dragon creature creature and gains flying and then he can bring him down by three to make a four four red uh dragon creature token with flying um and yeah that's it this is the only two abilities so this one this one's the design on this seems a little weird to me like am, am i correct me if i'm like missing something here okay so the static ability doesn't quite jive with the first activation right because there are instances of planeswalkers that say until your next turn. Mm -hmm. But this one says until end of turn, each planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 four, four red dragon creature. Right, so his static won't trigger off of the... Off of his... Yeah, so it's not like you can turn all your planeswalkers into dragons and then when people attack, like, they take damage from... I mean, he the other ability, he creates dragons, so that that jives, of course, and you're... It's going to go in a ja dragon deck for sure, but... Yeah, uh, a lot of dragon decks don't have time for something like this, I don't think. Like, Scion, Scion of the Ur Dragon or whatever, like, that one's a combo deck. Like, it, it'll win way more... For that five... What it, yeah, whatever five it can CMC. do with that five mana is way more lethal than what Sarkon can kind of bring to that deck. Um, the Ur Dragon in general, I'd probably say the same thing. Like, I think they'd probably be more interested in resolving a six CMC dragon because you know, the, the eminence ability, <clears throat> something that the six CMC type type dragon for the slot, yeah. this guy would go in, I guess. Um, if you're kind of trying to earn points with me, I guess, and you're doing a mono red dragon deck, then yeah, maybe I could see this guy coming into play because <laughs> Lathless get that Lathless going. Yeah, like dude. She, you're probably going to have a, a denser, a denser amount of, of dragons. Like, I don't know, but a lot of these dragons, like they're they're pretty big. Like that static ability might be superfluous to how big the dragons already are. Sure, it kind of messes with the combat, I I suppose. You know, yeah. And you can point them all in one, and and really damage the one you want to take out, then block, I suppose, with his static. So I don't know. This one's kind of a weird one. I'll agree, it is weird. It it it's it's a little bit unusual design, but I I do like it. Like it, as a character, he's really cool. The art's awesome. I think it's just like demonstrating how much that dude loves his fucking dragons. Yeah. It sucks you can't pop off his ability at least twice before you let him go. Yeah. Like he goes down by 3 loyalty to get a dragon. Yeah, you need to you need to cycle up an, another turn to get Yeah, he's get not going he's not going to be a very expensive uh card. Give me another red one. Yeah, so uh Jaya Venerated Fire Mage. Okay. So if another red source you control, this is a static ability. Oh, sorry. So she's four and a red, five loyalty abilities, and then or five loyalty counters. Her static ability, if another red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage plus one to that permanent or player instead. Okay. Uh, activated ability of minus two, Jaya Venerated Fire Mage deals two damage to any target. Uh, I like that static ability. I don't know how much i like it, it reminds for... me of pyromancer swath a little bit i think that's what that did oh it just added one to every you know like kind of lightning bolt but for five mana but dude, for five mana that's the thing is yeah, it her, her something that they can i just don't see that i don't know like it, it it would be really nice with 
you know, like you're doing a pyrohemia, like, okay, cool. Like those activations just basically get doubled now. Mm, right. Yeah, okay. Like stuff like that would be kind of cool. It's gotta um, be a red source. Okay. I like, I Dude, see, I have a pinger deck and I'm not looking at this. That's funny. You know, I'm not looking at this even with a pinger deck. Like it just, I'm like sorry. it's it's funny because there's things like that, like pyrohemia, gutter snipe could be kind of cool. Like yeah, if this is the last thing Jaya but, does before she goes to the retirement community, like. But ooh. she's the CMC is high for that, and then her activated ability is really. It it goes with that static ability, right? But it's just not jiving. Yeah. Uh. Okay. What about her daughter, uh, Chandra? <laughs> <laughs> That's in the lore, right? It's her daughter, isn't Some, it? Something like that. I mean, who you know, who who else has fire hair? Right? Okay, go. Okay, Chandra, fire artisan. So two and two red. She comes in with four loyalty counters. The static ability on Chandra is whenever one or more loyalty counters are removed from Chandra fire artisan, she deals that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Huh, okay. So we can add one loyalty counter to her, exile the top card of your library, you may play it this turn. And then the ultimate of minus seven, exile the top seven cards of your library, library you may play them this turn. So, so a little bit of card advantage in red, right? You can exile the top card and you can play it. Um... And you can basically like play the cards out of a new grip with her ultimate, right? For that turn. Her static ability is a little, I don't know. That's not enough in, in commander. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She deals that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So if you activate her ultimate, she deals seven damage on the way out. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's what would happen whenever one or more loyalty, like, it's funny they didn't give her any other way to reduce her loyalty other than you must ultimate with her. Yeah. <laughs> like to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I honestly, I actually think this card's interesting. I would not be sad about drawing this in a mono red deck for sure. I, the impulse draw, like I already want that. Well, I'm yeah. already going out of my way for that imp impulsive draw from enchantments. Um, it does have a minor deterrent. Like it, it's kind of sucky that you can't target a creature with it. Sure. To like ping off something else somewhere else, whatever. Like, oh, let me go hit that mana dork or let me pop off whatever. Um, but no, I'm, I'm okay with it, honestly. Yeah, I if mean, you get red, the alt, red, it's like, red, hey, card getting... red card selection is something you oftentimes need, right? Like, yeah, she... you kind of have to set the bar low with effects like this. Like, if you're thinking in terms of mono red and then, of course, Boros, like, even though it seems like we're kind of creeping in the right direction on the white side of things. But I, I really do like the impulsive draw effect because you can just get rid of stuff. Yeah. If it's a land, you can play it. If it's a car, car, like a card that's outside of your mana range right now, fuck it. You're in mono red, man. Like, when were you going to get that anyway? Like, that's kind of just the attitude I have yeah. for a lot of, the, like, the impulse draw effects. Like, you got to have to just <laughs> not be afraid of them. Because when they came out, and maybe I'm just talking to myself about that, I suppose, because when they first started kind of releasing these impulse draw effects into the game, it kind of freaked me out. I was like, well, it's gone forever. It's like, yeah, I don't know, man. You're, you're it's red. You're, you gotta, you, you're probably, there is no plan for tomorrow, dude. There is no plan for tomorrow. So, and then, yeah, her ultimate's just like, yeah, you expose the top seven cards and, you know, the lands you can play from that pile, I guess. Like, yeah, like a, you, a land. Yeah, like you can play a land out of that. And the other thing, too, is I think, I think when you're, you have to keep in mind if you're positioned to pop off her ultimate, you should have, yourself positioned to cast like you should have some mana available at that point right yeah like it's, it's not like oh man i'm gonna cast one spell out of seven cards like, you might not ever have to drop her ultimate like you can just keep going up and up and up and up yeah. and up and up and up yeah and that's know? probably not an ultimate that people are like oh my god oh my yeah god. keep it away oh, he's gonna oh. exile some of yeah they're, they're gonna exile some of their cards like, like if like if unless you, you have an absolutely crazy good deck and they're just scared of you having access to seven new cards. She, it's not something that's threatening people's games directly. I honestly want to try to give it a shot. Okay. I think I, it's just because she doesn't really like need help from anything else. Like, so you prolif proliferate. Cool. Like you could just keep, I don't know. You could just see, keep climbing up with this. And yeah, let's say we're way late. She's gone unanswered where she has, you know, 14 or more loyalties. Like that might be the difference in the game where you can just do seven 
and then access seven and then pass the turn or do what you're going to do. And then they still can't finish you off. You do another seven to their face, access seven new, seven new cards. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm kind of, maybe I'm, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm not seeing it the way I should, but I, I'm actually not too put off by this card. Honestly, there's definitely worse Chandra's out there. Yeah. And probably better ones. <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> I'm setting the bar lower for this card, I guess is kind of, my <clears throat> is that all the red ones? There is one more. Oh, who? So we did not talk oh. about Tybalt, dude. <laughs> dude, how can we forget about them? I am so sorry, my friend. All right, get in here. What do you do? <laughs> Tybalt, Rakish Instigator. I I don't like this character, dude. <laughs> anyway, he's two in You're a row. You're not into the meme of thinking that he's he's the best ever, dude? <laughs> he's two in a red for five loyalty counters. So the, the three for five thing mm-hmm. we've been talking about. Uh, static ability of your opponents can't gain life. Cool. That's useful in commander because people can gain shit tons of life. Yeah, it is useful. Uh, the activated ability is minus two. Create a one, one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target, which is a pretty common devil type thing. Devil type thing. Goblin yeah. arsonist type thing. Yeah. They did it first. Goblins of the original devils can continue. Sorry. Uh, how much loyalty does he come in with? Comes in with five. Um, so he's gonna get two of these devils. So I'd just point you to sulfuric vortex at this point. Yeah, like you upkeep and deal yeah, two. People can't you can't attack two, sulfuric vortex. Yeah, they can't really attack into a sulfuric vortex or ley line of punishment. Cause they, yeah, yeah, like the people that that's going this is going to affect. They're very interested in removing those effects. That effect really does hose some strategies like wholly and completely. Blocking life gain for like an Uncle Carl deck, he's just gonna look at you and go, "Yeah, that per- the, you, it, you it, know. It, it is one of the most effective tempo moves in Commander with against those types of decks." You just, sorry, like, you can't they gain will life. not play until they can remove that ability. Yeah, because they're looking to do it. So like Karlov and there's there's a there's a bunch of decks what's, out there. What's the worst is when Aloro gets this because you, <laughs> you just yeah, bring him out. I guess still can't do anything. Like, <laughs> like, you just nerfed. <laughs> you know? it's happening sulfuric vortex is probably just the way to go with it. okay so we're on to green now green dude green okay green uh let's start with do you want to do the old nissa or the new nissa let's do the new nissa dude her name is vivian champion of the wilds <laughs> so two and a green legendary planeswalker nissa i mean vivian uh you may cast creature spells as though ha- they had flash so that's actually pretty good. <laughs> it really is. Like that's actually okay. It's it's, uh, it's Yeva un unleashed, right? Because Yeva's green Dude, creatures, Yeva, I right? I was always happy to draw Yeva. Yeah, Yeva, I'm way into. Uh, plus Same one. CMC too, right? Uh, yeah. So I think she's is she four? She might right, be four. Plus one until your next turn. Up to one target creature gains vigilance and reach. So all right, swat that down. I guess you can attack with impunity and block with reach, and it stays. And then it's. Uh, her minus two, it says, look at the top three cards of your library, exile one of them face down, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. As long as it remains exiled, you may look at that card, and you may cast it if it's a creature card. So you can kind of put it down, do nothing, pass the turn, and then right before your turn begins, cast uh, it because her. of her ability, yeah. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a broken planeswalker, but it's one that you would definitely use. Yeah, I actually uh, am pretty into it. This is the kind of stuff that's like death touch tribal with planeswalkers is probably going to be pretty funny. Oh, that would be funny. because there's one other planeswalker in here that cares about death. death touch. Yeah, there is, but we'll, we'll because you that. can flash in like surprise fucker, and it comes in <laughs> and block off of her ability. Because yeah, you want you want prime blockers. Like I'm trying to think of ways to like. I really want to get at that fucking ultimate. I really don't want him approaching the ultimate. And you're like, are you going to kill your creature to do it? Are you going <laughs> to give up your creature to do it? That's the, one of the, the the best keyword on Atraxa besides flying is that, uh, well, death and the touch. proliferate. God, fuck Atraxa, dude. Dude, There's, it's, it's, it's too hard to even say the, what. All the best keywords. But it is keywords. the death touch flying. Like, that. she's just a goddamn great blocker for yeah, planeswalkers. You she know? really is. Uh, let's do the... One that we kind we kind of spoiled this a little bit in our last thing. Yeah, it was relevant to to one of the legendary creatures. So it's Arlen, voice of the pack. She's four green green for a legendary uh, planeswalker Arlen. Legendary creatures 
Legendary creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Did I copy this text right? Legendary creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter. No, on each it. creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf enters the battlefield. Okay, yeah, because I copied the text from their web website thing. So okay, so it's each. Not yeah, because that would be way too thought, niche why, for why targeted. Yeah, okay. And then, yeah, her, how much loyalty did she come in with? So she comes in, sorry, I moved to a different page for a second. Because where I'm copying this from clearly isn't. Like, she comes in with seven. Good God. So she's, she has a capacity left alone to create three wolf tokens herself. Yeah, three, three, threes, because they come in with yeah, a plus Yeah, they'll come in with a plus one. Yeah, so you bring her down by two and you create a two, two uh, green wolf creature token. So uh, I don't know, man. I think are we going to get werewolf tribal? I think like you one more shot at it? said, there's probably going to be more. There's no reason for them to have said werewolf unless they're planning on releasing some werewolves coming up. Do you think? Why would they put that in a standard release? Like, I don't know. Man. I know that. Yeah. Okay. You can throw a we bone have affinity to us. for artifacts on on another planeswalker, and I'm like, I I really are they really going to do affinity like? <laughs> Yeah, I had to actually like look, look up, up affinity because it's we haven't busted, seen that in so it's a busted long. Mecha- it's a busted mechanic, Kyle. It is. It's broken. Like there's, it, it's the one time they did it, it's warped things. Like like affinity is is just a deck. It will never not be a deck, and it's been picked apart. Even back when it was in standard, it got torn apart. And yeah. Uh. Anyway, yeah. So who knows? Who knows what's coming down the pipe? All right. Now let's look at old old Nissa, dude. Now that we've already talked about. Um, Wolf Nissa, Nissa, and- Nissa. So, so as a reminder, like Arlen will will go with with Tulsimir friend to wolves. Like that's oh yeah, sure. That's kind of the connection, that, the connection that we're trying to draw here. I wonder why mine the text says legendary. That's so weird. Like if it did, like it would fit with Tulsimir, right? Because he brings in a legendary wolf token. Yeah, I might have just copied the wrong thing. All right, so um, Nissa who shakes the world three GG. Legendary Planeswalker Nissa. Whenever you tap a forest for mana, add add an additional G. So you're getting a lot of G for this from this G. GG, dude. Plus G G. Plus one. Add three plus one plus one counters on uh of up to one target non-creature land you control. Untap it, it becomes a zero zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste, and it's still a land. And okay. then her ultimate is you get an emblem that with land that says with land uh, lands you control have indestructible. Search your library for any number of forest cards and put them into play f- tapped and then shuffle your library. That's crazy. She's pretty good in a mono green deck. Like here you f- here you go. Like I want her for <laughs> Grathama. She's she's distracting to me in in context of this set though, because we have we have Tomic right. Mm-hmm. The, oh yeah, the mono white legendary creature, and, yeah, that makes it so people you like. Oh, wait, sorry, land, not indestructible. Lands yeah, can't, can't be targeted, right? Yeah, and so I don't know, but then it doesn't that that would nerf her middle ability, right? Because you can't even target your lands, right? A little bit, yeah. Like it, I don't know. It's just there's just some weird land interest in this set that seems at odds with itself a little bit. Maybe yeah. I'm missing something here, but to your point, like the fact that she doubles the output of your forest. Okay. Fuck. Yeah. Like, or adds an additional green to it. And then you can just go pull them all out with her ultimate. Yeah, it is a little, that's fucking crazy. Like, here we dude. Go. And then, yeah, they're doubled too. They do yeah. come into tap, come in tapped mercifully. Yeah. But can you, but like if anybody, <laughs> lets you, just like if, the, le- if anybody lets you have another turn, like prepare your ass. <laughs> I mean, she probably like the way her loyalty they're, they're, set up. This is coming to shove so much kale up gonna, your ass. Like it's just like <laughs> you're gonna fucking love it. You need that vitamin K, bitches. Kale and miracle grow into your into your anus, <laughs> <laughs> and miracle grow because of the. <laughs> you got to get that additional G. You got to get that additional G. G. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I would. I the thing I'd think is that this is one of those planeswalkers where you're like, should I just do one more? <laughs> Before before you get to eight, should I just get to nine before I do this, or should I just dig it now? Because they did it one at a time. So after three turns, you're like on that fourth one. You're like, fuck, I, should I just do it or what? You know, 
Should I just grab the rest of my forests or all of them or should I? Because it's greedy if you get you'll all get your greedy. forests and you still want to double their output. Yeah, you'll get greedy. You'll be like, I'm going to do it. And then somebody's like, I'm attacking or, like, or I'm doing oh. a hero's downfall. And you're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um. So out of all of the Nissas, which one's your favorite? <laughs> well, the Nissa, Nissa is Nissa my favorite or Nissa. Wolf Nissa. <laughs> the new Nissa, you like Vivian? I like I like Nissa Nissa. Oh, you like old Nissa? Old Nissa. Old Nissa, dude. It, I'm still bummed that they named Vivian Vivian. Why? Because she kind of looks cool, but it's just such a it's such kind a, of an older it's name. Such a banal name. <laughs> okay. Um. There's one. Is there any more? Yeah, there is one more, but right, it's hit, barely worth mentioning. Right. Hit, hit me with it. Uh, Jiang Yanggu, Wild Crafter. Uh, two and a green comes in with three loyalty counters. Has a static ability of each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Has tap add one mana of any color. That's actually, that's actually not not terrible. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, uh, minus one put a my, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. So you can pop that off three times and yeah, I. So here's the thing to me, like I, I didn't spend a lot of time looking at what I could do with this guy, but typically if you're operating in plus one plus one counters. There's combos that you need to do. And I imagine he might have some space in there because tap untap for mana. So he may enable some infinite mana combos. I'm not positive about that. Karaj is very interested in getting a way to add blue to his mana pool. So, so he's going to fit into, to that piece. So yeah, like that's the hard part is getting him a way to add blue and then use blue to untap him. So, with this out, um, and I think the horseshoe crab, I think, is enough to kind of pop him off at that point. Okay. So he so he's gonna fit in as a combo piece somewhere. Somewhere. I I it, so evaluating Why is his dog so dinky in this art. Where in the Yeah, we're where, in like its own thing. He's like it's yoked, dude. Huge. He's the buffest dog in the multiverse, but in this one he's yeah, just like he's hey, like pal. tiny in the background. Does he get like is that him before he gets a plus one plus one counter? Well, is, maybe. That the, is that the story? He's a wild crafter, dude. He hasn't cr- wild crafted his dog yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your dog's tiny. I just haven't wild crafted it yet, I, dude. I, in terms of, but I think in terms of, like it, it fits into comboing with a plus one plus one counters. I don't know if I would be using this if I weren't trying to combo though. No, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how, yeah, I agree. All right. That's all of the mono colors, right? Dude, yeah. So more pl- than that that's it right, let's just take a break for a second dude oh my god this is just it's just so much language i'm sure we're just like fucking this up already but it's like there's i've got 4574 words on my on my word document with all of these written out it's grown since last time dude yeah man <laughs> well i added these t- well yeah sorry the legendary creatures are up at the top <laughs> but you know it's mostly planeswalkers all right multicolored <sighs> Dude, how do we even sort these? I I don't really know. You out. and I are going to be go bouncing all over the place now. How about you pilot these and I'll just kind of yeah. Okay, let's let's uh let's let's hit the Azorius ones first. Okay. I'll hit you with one of them right now. Okay. Okay, so we've got Dovin Hand of Control. Hand of Control. Uh so two and a hybrid Azorius, so either white or blue. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And he comes in with five loyalty account counters, so fits that template you're talking about. Three for five. Yeah, I mean, I'm now that I'm looking at it. There's it not. A, like, I mean, there's a lot. I really that should don't just say into that, but there's a lot of five loyalties here. We'll anyway, just say that. Okay. Uh, so he has a static ability of artifact, instant, and sorcery spells your opponents cast cost one more to cast. God. Uh, minus one as an activated ability until your next turn prevent all damage would be dealt to and dealt by target permanent and opponent controls. Uh, so you talked about that Gideon that allows yeah, you to prevent the damage, right? To and by, I guess is a little bit more than this one, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that activated ability can kind of like, you can make a blocker that blocks whatever. Yeah. Or so you, you can, nerf or you can an stop that, that, that for us. Yeah. All that jazz, right? Okay. Uh, and also just this making people pay more, right? It's like making people, you have to pay the Ristic study cost kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, artifact instant and sorceries, people are tempoed with that kind of stuff, right? How and much those, man those, is he? He's three. I and think if he was like just white blue, like he would be crazy. Cause you could get him out 
well during the setup phases where all their mana rocks are now taxed up that would be nice the the thing to me is is that spell slinger decks are usually towing a pretty thin line with uh with their mana right and mm, if you're making yeah. them spend extra uh you're you're throwing a wrench in their gears pretty 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 big okay uh i got to ask would you put this in a, in a in a um what's your king brago, brago. Would, would you put this in a brago deck cuz you can keep, yeah you can just keep resetting kind of him breaking that a little bit i could see doing that so I, hang on can you activate him hit blink activate again that's usually how it goes okay, with those okay, planeswalkers okay. Yeah, right? right yeah you're right yeah so you could I, I could see doing that for sure. All right, I'm just asking because I I don't I, I don't have a place to put this guy. I'm even thinking about him like I don't really have yeah, a place. Yeah, I just I like it's a very specific ask, isn't it? Right. Uh is there another Azorius one or is that the only one? Yeah, there is one more. Oh, who is that? Teferi Time Raveler. Oh, whoa. Yeah, I forgot. Okay, what does he do? Uh so one and a white and blue for four loyalty counters. Okay. Uh, he's got a static ability of each opponent can cast spells only any time they could cast a sorcery. So that's typical. So that's teferi. a teferi, that's, teferi thing. That's right? your typical teferi. Uh, activated ability. So plus one in until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. God, that is really narrow. Very teferi. Very narrow teferi. Okay. Because <laughs> the other one was creatures. I think you could flash. In. Yeah. All right. So now your instants and sorceries. I'll become instants, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, minus three is the other activated ability. Return up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand. Draw a card. Return up to one target artifact, creature, enchantment. Uh, so again, this is a planeswalker that's not like a huge bomb, right? Low to the ground, three CMC. Yeah. Uh, gives you the ability if he's just going up, 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 up. That allows you to play your sorceries at instant speed, and, and it keeps everybody else slowed down. Slowed down to sorcery speed. Uh, you might occasionally use him for that bounce effect, right? Okay, bouncing something to somebody's hands. How would, I don't know. How do you evaluate this, Andy? I'm just trying to think of who wants this. Like, I'm I'm more of like the static effect. Uh. My the, Joda has a lot of sorceries. It's almost a sorcery tribal deck. There's a lot of sorceries. So it would kind of set this up. And a lot of board wipes. So yeah, maybe. A lot, a lot of my Joda spells are only Joda survives. Like the, a lot of board <laughs> wipes are just like built around. He's the only one that survives somehow, you know? Yeah. So I could do with things at instant speed with the sorceries that way. And then, yeah, I guess if I'm not really drawing into the sorceries after a while or I've, I've expended them, uh, start dropping this guy's loyalty down, I suppose. Um, that's about it though. That's the only place I can think of putting him. Okay. From, for myself, I, I don't, I, it's just that sorcery speed pieces. Very specific. Yeah. It's, it, that's kind of the interesting thing with some of these multicolor planeswalkers, <laughs> right? Is like you have two colors for most of them <clears throat> that are operating. And, and so you have very specific places that you know, these, I'm all about that sorcery support. You know, I think we should need to support sorceries. I mean, you're all for that for sure. You're like, I want to play at instant speed. So I thought you would be way into Teferi. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, that you're right. But I'm saying like, it's always instant and sorceries. They've kind of been lumped together. Like, I'm trying to think of like, is there cool effects that you could do just for sorceries that make them really crazy other than just turning them into instants, you know, which is what this guy's doing. Yeah. Like a sorceries tribal type commander out there that would happen like that would be pretty sick. I mean, right? when I think about it, something like this usually means that if you've built your deck right, you are going to be able to be more efficient with your mana because the the cost of having a sorcery or the reason they're at sorcery speed often they're usually is pretty they're usually bigger. cheaper than the instant version of them, right? Well, their effects are usually bigger too. Yeah, they're either the effect is bigger or like like Let's say, I don't know. I'm just thinking of like enchant and artifact removal. Like usually the instant speed ones are sitting at three or four. Mm -hmm. You have some sorcery speed ones that sit at two CMC. Like the, 
the or even just one or in even some just, cases, just but one. they have like a weird mana yeah, requirement so, or they so gain people life or something. Something like this allows you to kind of be more efficient with your mana because you're playing sorceries, right? Like, but then again, like it's not like he's your commander. I mean, no, yeah, just, I, he's just a card you're right, deck. So. You're right. Um, is there anybody else that works for Azorius? Anybody? That's, those are the only two that I know of. Okay, let's go. I mean, I guess we're sticking with the guilds theme. A yeah, bit. let's do it. Uh, it's Demir's next, right? Yeah, let's move to Demir. Bro, dude, bro, <laughs> you, you, bro. Do I need to get prepared? So Andy? Ashiok, uh, Dream Render, and yeah, say here we would do with like the smoky text box type thing. Uh, she's it. I don't even know. They is one blue black hybrid. So one and two of the hybrids, so blue, black, or blue, black, either or. Um, for a legendary planeswalker, Ashiok, spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. So for three mana, you already put something down like a mind orb lock or whatever that, what is it, mind lock orb that just, they can't search their libraries. Yeah. Uh, here's pretty, this one's pretty nuts too. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard then exile each opponent's graveyard. And she's got five loyalty. That's crazy. So you can do that five, five times. Five times if there's nothing coming her way anyway, as far as the five, attack goes. Five turns is, is long enough to, to really cock up somebody's game. If you go first, there goes the Cultivates. Yeah. You know. Yeah, the Cultivates, the Kadama's Reach. That handy like, mulligan four for the Cultivate Kadama's Reach just got shut the fuck down. Yeah, that's that's... <laughs> That's pretty funny. Actually. It is really funny. It, um, it punishes a lot of things in Commander. Yeah, for sure. I, I like in the early game that card, but I really like her for the late game. I I, I love Graveyard Hate. You know, because so, our graveyard is our graveyards are running wild. I think Graveyard Hate, like just as a general thing, is is a is a big deal. And I think in particular, since it's in the colors, Demir. Yeah. If you're playing Mill, one of the biggest like gambling things you're doing is you're putting cards into graveyards for people and Ashiok is like the best friend to this strategy yeah, right just shove it out anyway like mill I'm going I'm going to mill four cards and I'm going to shove you shove all those cards out yeah or you can mill yourself cuz they're they're two different yeah. things yeah if you're that guy but yeah dude I I'm pretty into that one uh the other Demir one just to kind of spo- like get to him is yeah we talked about this right? yeah it's it's tezzeret um tezzeret master of the bridge which i actually really like that name um creatures and planeswalkers you control have affinity for artifacts so to kind of say what that is is that their their colorless require or sorry generic requirement is reduced by how many artifacts you control so the more artifacts you control the less they cost to get resolved um, he comes in with five loyalty, but you can bring him up by two. Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge, deals X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of artifacts you control, and you gain X life. So that just is... If, if nothing else was on the card, we're good. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, moving forward, everything is reduced, and you can just keep slamming everybody for how many you've that, got. That's, that's a crazy powerful upward loyalty activation yeah, because they lose life and you gain life it's a huge pitch that's huge it's a huge pitch um you can bring him down by two and it says return target artifact from your graveyard to your hand so you never know like you know gotta grab that whatever static orb whatever you're looking to grab yeah. out of the graveyard um and then his ultimate is down eight exile the top 10 cards of your library put all artifact cards from among them into the battlefield that's so, yeah, you know, you stick with Bolas long enough and you're going to get a Yeah, he's he's really cool. He's yoked. He's really cool. Um So places this this is belongs. Dude, Brea like Brea for sure. Um Sharoom. Sharoom. Like, anything with Sidri's probably interested. Sidri even. Yeah, why not, you know? Like the creatures keep getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and if you're running a lot of artifact creatures like they probably will just be canceled out their cost. Oh yeah. You know. Uh yeah, really really crazy freaking version of Tezzeret <sighs> in my opinion. I'm into this. Like I I want to see Tezzeret hit the board. Obviously, again, like the colors kind of say like there's very specific decks where this belongs, but Man, I just want to see this guy go crazy. Is that all the Demir ones? I think there's just the two. Okay, who's next on the wheel? It would be... 
So should we move to It'd be Rakdos? Rakdos? Yeah. Okay. Where do we, are there any? So there's just one, to my knowledge, the looking on Scryfall. So we've got Angrath, Captain of Chaos. Oh, this guy. So what a cartoon this guy is. Yeah, something right. He's like something out of like like a episode of the Power Rangers. You know, he was he was like very angry in the Ixalan story. Was he? I mean, he was trapped on Ixalan and he's a planeswalker, but like, and then he breaks out and he's like, after ten thousand years, I'm finally free. <laughs> Time to conquer Earth. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Okay, so it's two and then two hybrid Rakdos mana, so either a black or a red. So four total CMC. Uh, Comes in with five loyalty counters. He has a static ability of creatures you control have menace. All right. And then an activated ability of minus two and a mass two. We haven't talked about this mechanic, a mass, yet. Have we? If we have, we might have in the last. Maybe we did. Not this episode. So, yeah. Yeah, you make like an army token. So and, it's basically like this zero zero. And you put the, um, whatever the amass number is, is how many plus one plus one counters you put on it. I haven't asked you, I don't think yet. Like, what do you, what do you think of this, of amass? It's just, it, like, I get, I get the theme, like what they're going for here with, with the undead invasion kind of story that's going on with War of the, War of the Spark. But it's just a artificially complex mechanic. It, it kind of reminds me of Explore or, or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. You know, from Ixalan, yeah, where it was like all of that to get a plus one plus one counter, like the, like all of the steps you take to just a lot of the time, that's what you ended up with. So, so Mark Rosewater talks about how like basically like they can afford to do like one complex mechanic per set. Do you but think that this doesn't? Is it? But that doesn't mean that they should do a complex mechanic. Like they can just keep it easy for everybody. Uh huh. I don't, I don't know. Cause to me, I'm like, I don't know how to abuse this. Like on the surface of it, you know, like well, in, as a commander it, player, it, it marries to proliferate. Yeah, so of course. I think a mass works really well with, you know, yeah, what you might call it. Um, what, what card doesn't, but yeah, I just uh, doubling season. Yeah. Of you course. A mass, a mass, a mass, a mass, a mass. <laughs> um, menace is a cool I'm okay thing. With it. I just think it's kind of, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. You know? Pretty much, you get a two-two zombie. Yeah, yeah. He 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 gives you a two-two yeah, zombie that, that's con, that's consistent of plus one plus one counters rather than being an actual two-two zombie. Like, look, think of the board state where you. Oh, I'm going to make an a mass focus deck. Like, oh man, that's going to be a mess. There's going to be dice and tokens everywhere. Yeah, it's going to be kind of gross. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be kind of um, gross. As far as granting everything menace. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know where to put this guy. I don't know what deck. It, it's, I think it's where to put him. Yeah. I mean, it's useful. I think Menace is useful, but I don't know if I need to pay four mana to have a, an anthem that gives all my creatures Menace, right? Yeah. I, I don't I don't know. I'd be interested to see what other people find if they put this to use. Uh, he's, he's not menacing to me, though. <laughs> okay, what's the next one? So should we move to Gruel from here? Yeah, how many of those are there? So I see two. Okay. So I'll hit the first one. Okay, do it. So we've got Domri Anarch of Bolas. Okay. Uh, one red green for three loyalty counters. Static ability on Domri Anarch of Bolas is creatures you control get plus one plus zero. He has two activated abilities. So the first one you go up one, uh, add a red or green. Creature spells you cast this turn can't be countered. Mm. And then a down two activation where target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. <clears throat> so um, he's, he's like a little bit of a kit card for sure. Yeah, exactly. Like buffing up your creature. It's it's obviously like for a very creature centric deck. Uh, but he himself isn't. So but he himself really isn't. Give up the slot. So it, and that's the funny thing is I because I recently be, built Nakaya right and I was like I actually wouldn't mind these abilities but I can't put this guy in the deck. <laughs> so okay with your with your Nakaya list would you take him or Rhythm of the Wilds? Read Rhythm of the Wilds. It's the one where they either enter with a plus one. It says creature spells you control just flat cannot be countered. That's just the 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 static from this enchantment. So an enchantment that cannot be attacked, where this guy, where this kid can, and then they either they have riot. So the creature spell, the creature either enters with a plus one plus one counter or has haste. I'd probably take Rhythm of the Wild over this guy personally. So there's an, and I think it's an uncommon, isn't it? Yeah, it is an uncommon. So there's an uncommon enchantment for the same mana, right? That can't be attacked. <laughs> that can't be attacked. 
All right, moving on. Who's the other? Who's the other? Um, Semlet. Do you do you got this one, dude? Uh, yeah. So she's one of the hybridized ones, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can navigate. To, yeah. So Samut Tyrant Smasher. <laughs> um, so she's she has fucking hated Bolas from the get go. Yeah, she's got a pretty pretty bad vendetta. Her and Ugin. Uh, two. Uh, for hybrid red or green, hybrid red or green. So four mana creatures you control have haste. And she comes in with five loyalty, but you can bring her down by one, and the target creature gains plus two, plus one, and gains haste until uh, the end of turn, and then scry one. So I guess you can still do that haste even if she dies, I guess. Yeah. If, if for that last thing. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this one's really going to be put into a lot of decks either. I, you know, as much as I love haste, like, I just listed off a card that costs less mana. And can provide it for and you. And then... Here's the thing. Here's what I love about Rhythm of the Wilds, right? Like, if you fall into another redundant haste effect, like, the worst thing ever is having a Fervor and a Hammer of Perforos. Oh, yeah, you know, but with Rhythm uh, of the Wilds, you can, you know, I'm like, oh, fine, I'm just going to make them bigger. Yeah, I'm just going to do the Riot side then, you know? So, I guess with her, like, at least her reduction of loyalty bumps them a little bit, and then they scry one. I'm just still not digging it. You yeah, it, it, so this one feels a lot like Angrath, right? Where it's kind of like she was still a creature. Like, let me use, let me give some some kind of like keyword that we like to see on on creatures, mm -hmm. and and then like a kind of underwhelming activation. Yeah, uh, it seems like a lot in both cases to be paying for mana. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, okay, so who's next on the guild wheel? Since we're kind of stuck to that. Uh, so is Selesnia next? I think it would be. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. so we'll move to Selesnia. Okay, so I see one right now, dude. It's Hwatli, the heart, the sun's heart. Hwatli. So she's two hybrid green or white. Um, each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its... You're already rubbing your hand. Yeah! Dude. You're so <laughs> fucking weird, dude. What's up with you in butts, man? Um, each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Um, she comes in with seven loyalty, but you can reduce her loyalty by three to gain life equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. <laughs> so it's kind of, you can only get that off twice. Who are, yeah. they, who are they worried about? I suppose like, oh my God, we gotta, we gotta throttle that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What's funny to me is I'm like, why, why are they so worried about that when like Ikra exists? Right? Okay. So you <clears> are, <throat> you are the authority of Magic the Gathering butt link. <laughs> and and butt damage um what what do you say well so so the thing is that there there's only a handful of cards that that do this right where they switch assigning damage with their with their toughness yeah there's doran there's that one enchantment yeah uh, so there's there's uh and i always forget the names of isn't there of like the a cards. dinosaur there is a dinosaur it, that, that does, does it. it it's seven mana the dinosaur i think okay um so you're going to take it. Like if you're running those kind of bunt, butt link type things, mm -hmm. you're, you're definitely going to take it. Obviously there's a couple of them that, that have it in the zone. Okay. Right. So like Arcades is going to do it from the zone, right? Yes. Uh, Doran does it from the zone. Doran. That was like one of your original. That like, was like my second or third. It was, I think it was my third deck. Guys, I have a signed affidavit from Kyle that says that his firstborn son will be named Doran Vorenklex Wheeler. It's true. I have it. <laughs> signed and notarized. So the, so the, uh, that's how obsessed he is with butt link and butt and butt. It's true. I'm yeah. fucking into it. Assault formation is the enchantment. Right. Uh, it's so I forget the name of the dinosaur that does it. There is a dino that does it, but I'm taking this for sure. You're going to do it. You're going to put it. In I your... will use it because I have Ikra and Timna deck. And it can only be good. And it's just, it just helps. Yeah, it just helps. It okay. just helps. All right. Give us the other Selesna one. Okay. So the other one is a Johnny the Great. That was a very narrow evaluation, right? right? But what else do you do with it? Well, like, I mean, like there's, you know, if you're running butt tribal, like <laughs> butt tribal. That's what it is, right? Yeah, I guess. It's butt tribal. I mean, it's toughness, but yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's it's not like it's a hard thing to evaluate. Like, there is there is a strategy in Commander that uses it, and this card goes into that strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a Johnny the Great Hearted. So two, a green and a white. So four total CMC. Five loyalty counters on okay. this a Johnny. Okay. Static ability of creatures you control have vigilance. So this is kind of like Samwit. 
an Angrath where we've got that thing Just going a on. Keyword granter. Yeah. Yeah. But he has two activated abilities. So the first one is plus one, you gain three life. Yay. Dude, we were getting better at, at rattling these off, man. I can feel it. All right, sorry, continue. <laughs> Minus two. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. And a loyalty counter on each other planeswalker you control. Oh, wow. Atraxa. Jeez, fuck. The tracks is way into it. Yeah, you just eat that twice, I guess. I mean, it, it, at least it's a heavy, a heavier ask if you're going to do that one. But yeah, each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each pl- other planeswalker you control. Yeah, so yeah, if you're in a place where you're proliferating, like you're, he's just going to help that proliferation even more right yes it's just i don't know super friends dude do we need to talk about super friends that no, much like it's, it's fucking no i'm good fucking super friends. all right moving on who's the next on the guild wheel so we move to orzov i think oh my god how many of those are there dude how many there's orzov? two of these okay who are they so let's start with kaya okay so kaya bane of the dead so she's three generic and three hybrid Orzhov mana, so either a white or a black. She comes in with seven loyalty counters. She has a static ability of your opponents and permanent to your opponents control with hexproof can be the targets of spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have hexproof. Kaya Bane of the Dead. Okay. And then minus three exile target creature. That's it. Uh, this is too much mana in my humble opinion, Andy. For this stuff. Well, right? how much was the Wanderer? Wasn't she five? Fuck. Right? Because we my... were we were saying that we're okay with the the Wanderer being out. Because she comes into play, has that, yeah, your opponent's permanence with Hexproof, so they can become the target. So she strips Hexproof. They kind of left Shroud out. But, you know, it's kind of a... Wait, which one are you looking at? We're looking at Kaya, aren't we? Bane of the Dead? Yeah, but you're comparing her to the Wanderer? Right, doesn't they doesn't there isn't their thing exile target creature? Isn't so that... she comes in with four. You're right. If she comes in, she comes she's a four CMC. Okay. Yeah. Comes in with five and exiles twice. Yeah, exiles twice. Alright, does this one so for two so more she's mana six yeah. and can exile twice, but doesn't have the limitation of four CMC. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're like Kyle. You're being a hypocrite in your in your evaluation here. Well, I'm not saying hip. Oh, dude, hang on. Man. Okay, not, well, not not, not that strong of word, but like God. inconsistent. Yeah, inconsistent. It's a little bit more for the added effect of stripping away hexproof, right? <laughs> yeah. I oh, just, and you can do any creature size. So now Narset gets eaten by this. Of course, it's true. by the time you get this out, it's too late. Yeah, it is too late. It is too <laughs> it's late. Too late. For that. I don't know. I'm kind of. I think I'm just kind of like, maybe I'm I'm a little turned off by the fact that I've got to pay six mana to have that static ability of removing hexproof. Dude, hexproof fucking sucks though. Like like going out of your way to remove hexproof. What other? I mean, well, I'm, there's I'm lands. wearing the black hat here. Dude. I'm wearing you know I'm I'm Mister Con you know whatever. Um, there yeah, there's a land. There's two there's, lands. Yeah, is there two lands? Okay, yeah. so yeah, there's two lands. One of which does hit shroud, and the other yeah. one doesn't. Right. There's that artifact, the glaring spotlight. Yeah. I guess there's the crazy boar thing that's a lot of mana in green. Is there anything else that removes hexproof? Uh, the list is short, my friend. It I, is. You know. It is short. It's Although just, this is a high CMC for it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, you could just. You can just, you know, shoot a board wipe or some shit at that, yeah. you know, and in the colors that she's in, you probably can just try to eat, like, CC them to death with some kind of edict effect rather yeah, than... Yeah, because you're talking about the archetype of endurance is what you're saying, like, yeah, because it's eight mana to give all your stuff hex True, and it's a dope card. It and really take is. it from others. Yeah, it, it's a dope card, but... All right, all right. So, so let me let me give you another example. So there's Bonds of Mortality. It's an enchantment. Oh, yeah, that's a green card. So too. it's it's one in a green, mm-hmm. and it has when Bonds of Mortality enter the battlefield, draw a card, but it has an activated ability to pay one green. Creatures your opponents control lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Yeah, this is in a different color. It's outside of, of white, black. But it, to me, I'm just kind of like, man, it doesn't... It scales differently because you can pay one and tap with the Arcane Lighthouse or mm-hmm. the Detection Tower. like. It's it's a lot of mana to get that. But these are on the same piece of cardboard. It is. Like so for 6 mana you can exile a creature with hexproof in it the is. Wor- a worst case scenario. You're right. Which 
but then they can just reacquire which it which else, maybe I, I need to back up on my assessment here because in commander people like the the things that are most problematic people are protecting with hexproof they really want to get them under a hexproof like they know how umbrella. important that piece is to their deck dude how about this let's hate on both of the cards you know let's go back let's You're take like, back never what mind we said wanderer's about dog the shit wanderer let's just go back on it you know i'm i'm okay with that all right is there another oh yeah there is an or let me let me read our he's our give it to me babe. where have you been so it's soren vengeful <laughs> bloodlord uh two white black as long as it's your turn creatures and planeswalkers you control have lifelink Give me the blood lord. Uh, it comes in with four loyalty, but you can add two more. And Soren Ven- Vengeful Blood Lord deals one damage to target creature or player. But you know he's got life link because he's a whatever. Um, or you can bring him down by X, and it says return target creature with converted mana cost of X from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is a vampire in addition to its other types. Yeah. All right. I mean, he needs just some time to warm up. You know, after being uh, after his sabbatical <laughs> inside of a wall. <laughs> It's just kind of boring, I guess. I don't know. I'm not really blown away. I mean, the creatures have life link. How do you how do you feel about that? I guess uh, it's just like there's a whip of Erebos that does yeah, something it, similar it, exactly. to this. There, there's some overlap here. Yeah, the whip of Erebos brings that creature in. They gain haste. You lose them. So the funny thing is, is I was kind of like looking at this. I was like, if you're doing this with super friends, mm-hmm. then it makes it so that stuff like like the this Chandra and Jaya that are in the same oh, set. Yeah, yeah. You got to get, but. What what's whoa dude? I'd like to know what Super Friends deck out there is Mardu. You know, is there a Queen Marquise uh, Mardu a really, Super Friends a really, deck out there? Really good question, dude. There might be because of the you know Death Touch stuff, but I think this is why people are clamoring to allow Planeswalkers to be commanders. Yeah, is is this kind of stuff like the, so? That there's more flexibility to do Super Friends in different places. Right? Okay, okay. Um, can we move on? Yeah, I mean, I so. I have had a very long journey with life gain mm-hmm. in, in this game, right? Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, life gain for life gain's sake is is to me a bad idea, right? Like, so Soren is kind of like if you it, it, obviously you're in the colors to do it to pay it out. So I we did an episode where I converted my uh, Lysia deck to a life life link tribal, right? Yeah, and so I. It was using the life link to gain the life and then it was able to like drain it out into other, other things. And so I can see this being useful, but I, I would just say life link for life link's sake is not, not good. Like you need something else that you're doing in your strategy. So it's, I think it can be good in that context, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, who's after Orzov in the guild wheel? Uh, Scryfall lists. Is that next? No, oh, dude. Here we go. Uh, all right. So let's do Ral Storm Conduit. Um, he's two, a uh, blue and a red. Whenever you cast a cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Ral Storm Conduit deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Hey, let's get him on teamed up with Soren, dude. So what's unique here, or not unique, but you know, um, interesting is that even when you copy stuff, yeah. So because you don't cast copies, but he actually is okay with that. Um, he comes in with four loyalty, but you can add two more and just scry one. <laughs> um, or you can bring him down by two, and it says when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. So he would deal, uh, what, two damage when you do that? Yeah. He straps a shock to that a little bit. Yeah, that's fucking cool. Um, again, this is just kind of one of those problems with Spellslinger decks is where's the window to cast this guy? Yeah, because we, you and I have, t- you and I were recently talking about Talrand. How often when we've had Talrand in decks, we don't know when to cast him. I don't know when to cast him, and he's in the exact same CMC slot, right? Yeah, I, I have trouble finding a window to resolve permanence in an instant or sorcery based deck. So that's where this. You know, that's that's the type of deck that wants to know Ralph Storm Conduit's location is is an instant or sorcery deck. Yeah. So yeah. So when Mizzix hits the same timing as Mizzix, like they're both the same mana. I will choose to resolve Mizzix on turn four before I put out Ral. Um and then you've wasted then the fo- you've wasted your turn. The yeah, next and turn. then the follow up turn, like unless I have a brainstorm in hand and nothing else, 
like most of the time with a Mizzix deck, you yeah. resolve your one CMC, your two CMC is now one CMC, your three C and then resolve that, your three CMC is now one CMC. So it just because you're just earning the loyalty as you climb up, like you Yeah, you need to get moving with those experience you need to get counters. With the experience counters because you know, if your opponents know the deck, it's they're scrambling to get Mizzix removed from the table. You're like, look, guys, I'm a fucking idiot. I just played Ral Storm Conduit instead of getting experience counters. What do yeah. you want from me? Yeah, but um, Shahili Shahili Sublime Artificer, on the other hand, she's one blue, one hybrid blue or red, or hybrid blue or red. So she's three mana. Um, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a one-one colorless servo artifact creature token. Um, she comes in with five loyalty, but you can bring her down by two, and it says target artifact you control becomes the copy of another tar- target artifact uh, or creature or creature you control until the end of turn, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So you kind of like morph them around a little bit. I think that actually kind of fits her paradigm a little bit, right? Like she kind of shapes metal or is that kind of like her yeah, story? I don't really know. She's, she's a sublime artificer, um, dude. Ignoring the artifact piece of it, she actually is pretty okay for a spell slinger deck because you just get a servo. You yeah. Kind of cast a non-creature, you just keep getting more and more servos. Like, they're more blockers, they're more sack fodder, I guess, to kind of answer edict effects and ahead of, you know, your precious spell slinger, and if Mizzet Perun or M- Mizzix or whoever, you're, whoever your spell slinger is, uh, Melek. I'll, I will be putting her in, in my Will, will and Rowan deck. Yeah, she's she's good. This is a good one. Yeah. This one's good. I'm like, I don't, I don't really need her, that artifact ability, but the static ability is pretty cool. You and want like, the static ability. And like, and hey, yeah, she makes hey it, if I she get a Gilded Lotus fun. out and can turn a token into another Gilded Lotus, cool. Yeah, because she can make that one of these servos into a Gilded Lotus. So you like, have two Gilded Lotuses. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I like her. I like, I really like that one, actually. And she's on uncom- She's one of the uncommons. We haven't even really been mentioning the rarity here. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good point. Like, that's... Yeah. Okay, yeah. who's next on the wheel? So let's move to Golgari. Here. Oh, my God. Okay. So, uh, we've got Vraska. Vraska. Dude, we should, we should, we should keep the linguists on on hold at all times on dude. Full, uh, staff them full time instead yeah, of a seasonal position right, right. okay so Vraska uh, swarms Im- eminence so she's two and then two hybrid Golgari mana so either a black or a green uh, so four total CMC she comes in with five loyalty counters she has a static ability of whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a player or a planeswalker put a plus one plus one counter on that creature Dude, v- Vraska is to me actually the most intimidating of the planeswalkers. <laughs> like, she usually has assassins associated with her, right? She reminds me of this <clears throat> boss I used to have, dude. Like, you know, she big really oven, does. Dude. The big oven? No, no I'm not, just kidding. Not the big oven. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I interrupt. I keep interrupting you. Sorry. <laughs> so the activated ability, she only has one activated ability, so she's going down. So it's minus two. Create a 1-1 one, one black assassin creature token with death touch. And whenever this creature deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. Uh, so considering the uh, density of Super Friends decks is about to go up in the metagame of Commander, mm-hmm. uh, Vraska's your, your inoculation. Yeah, because what's-his-face is like $1,000, right? How much is Garuk P- oh, Apex yeah. Predator? Fuck. Yeah, so this is kind of a roundabout way to kind of end lives of other planeswalkers without having to deal with it. But that static ability is pretty dope, and I'm sure that I'm sure you have plenty to say about that, eh, Andy. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I wish it was just draw a card when they deal damage. That would be fucking awesome. I don't think it would be that big of a deal either to get give them that because you know, unless you find trample later, having. I've always kind of said this about death touch. Like the best death touchers are the ones that are just so not worth interacting with. They're so expendable. By, yeah. Like one ones and things like that. Like the really big ones, like you kind of just want them to, I don't know, not attack you. You get in like, but yeah, like the Gitrog monster is, is probably one that fits in that range, right? Like it is a six, six that does a lot of work for you. A person may or may not be interested in losing that. Yeah. They might take it from him maybe, but, one ones they generally just get in. So whatever kind of combat trigger you're looking to do, 
um, like larceny or whatever. I found that the lower the CMC they are, like they just take the damage yeah. and you draw the card. Um, except for when you find trample, then you do want their scale to go up because of just that interaction with death yeah, touch. Death and touch and deals trample. the one damage and kills them. Then they trample. Over. Yeah. I'd be all over this chick. If it just says creatures with death touch deal damage, um, you draw a card. Like if they just, instead of getting plus one, plus one counters, they draw a card. I, I would be way, way, way into Vraska, which I already am, but yeah, you know, all right. Um, is there another one or is she the only one? That's the only one in, in Golgari. A little bit exclusionary there. Yeah. Uh, who's next? Boros, dude. Bo- I'm going to leave this one to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Nahiri, Storm of Stone. Two, two hybrid Boros mana, so either red or white. Uh, so four total CMC. She comes in with six loyalty counters. Her static ability is as long as it's your turn, creatures you control have first strike and equip abilities you activate cost one less to activate. Mm, all right. She has an activated ability of minus X. Nahiri Storm, uh, uh, Storm of Stone deals X damage to target tapped creature. So I kind of rate her with Shahili a little bit, like one that you wouldn't be super... Like just leaving her wouldn't really bother you. That yeah, like much. you don't need to activate her. Activated yeah, like ability. her activated ability is kind of really meh, especially since you can't recover from it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I didn't look too deeply into things that reduce activation costs and where they fit CMC wise, but I I can see. I mean, let's be honest. If you're playing Boros and you're doing equipment, you probably need some help. So. We'll take it, I guess. Huh? This 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 will this will do some tricks for you, I guess. It's not like auto equipping, which is something that exists out there. You know, like True. It's, it's definitely not the best thing in terms of getting equipment onto your creatures, but it it can help. I I don't know. And then you have a spot removal if you need it. I suppose is the other thing. But again, this is this is a, a really good example of a planeswalker that you don't need to activate. The activated ability, the static ability makes it so she's fine to come out and behave like a, an attackable or anthem prone effect. to attack. A weird anthem where it gives him first strike and reduces the equip requirements. Yeah. Okay. She's the only Boros one? She's the only Boros one I know of. Okay. Uh, who's after that? Simic, dude. All right. So I see Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. You know, she's just kind of like in the way, this character. Doesn't she just kind of show up? Yeah, so she shows up on Theros and she acts like she's Is Thassa. she from Theros? No. Where is she from? I don't think, at least as I recall in the story, like she shows up on the plane and she finds other merfolk and she starts acting like she's Thassa because she's summoning all the like sea creatures. And, and they're, they're like, like whoa, this must it's, be the it's goddess fucking of the Thassa. Sea, the god of the sea, okay. Notice um, she's got Thassa's And she was in Zendikar. Thing. Yeah. I think she might be from Zendikar if all I recall. Right. All right, so Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. She's two and a hybrid green or blue. Uh, whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. She comes in with seven loyalty, and you can bring her down by one to untap target permanent. So big creatures and untapping things seems to kind of be her her and her followers' uh, so, thing. So this is a... Uh, Prerogative. Interest. Temur ascendancy, Temur, Temur ascendancy does the same thing in terms of the static, right? Yeah, except for they give you haste too. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean the red part of of Temur. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know where to put this one. The like, only thing I, I like this is just another one where I'm like, are you putting this in in your? <sighs> There's better ways to go off with the. So chain I guess if bell, you do right? like the sea beast version of a Rick Smithies this because you can use it to untap the land i suppose oh yeah um like i don't think this one's bad i just don't know where to put it outside of like it, it we all we all know it's going to every sea beast deck like that's where it's going sure anybody who's in like the the sea beast non mono blue versions like that's where it's gonna going to go anything that's really looking to capitalize on untap abilities she's there's better options like kiora's follower is yeah. one yeah um there's just a lot of like in this a little bit for a little bit more mana you can get the fate stitcher for Christ's sake like there's just a lot of yeah uh juicier cards out there and then yeah uh, a lot of that untapping stuff you can't really capitalize on her static effect either 
So I don't really know where to head. Yeah, with the this only one. the only thing I could think of was like maybe it's one more thing that helps untap the chain veil. But again, there's true. Yeah, there. I mean, that's that's a very particular. Again, super friends. Yay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, is she the only Simic one? No, there is one more. Oh, there is who? Tamio. Oh yeah. Collector of tales. Yeah. Okay. So she, she's like the the Sarah Koenig of the multiverse. Dude, can I can she's I say out something podcasting about, about about this art right here? So you've heard me talk about this game called Fatal Frame a lot, right? Yes. This art kind of spooky me a little bit, dude. I can't like I don't know if it's just like it's very well done art. It's it's really great, but there's just something about that pale white face again with the mouth <laughs> and just w- the way it's a little bit in the distance, a little bit. She she is spooky me a little. Like I'm 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 getting the goosebumps just looking at it. Anyway, sorry, I can get into it. I I, I got to stop interrupting you. <laughs> As I was saying, we've got the podcaster of the multiverse here. <laughs> She's collecting tales, dude. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's got to go out there and determine if Nicol Bolas is really yeah, guilty. Yeah, she's looking to she's looking to get that interview with you know, like, like what what's that dude's name? That guy that everybody's into the way well, he almost he hits every fucking podcast ever. Are you, know, ta- do you are you talking about uh, the This American Life guy? Yeah, that's the Ira guy. Glass. Yeah, she's the Ira Glass of, <laughs> of Planeswalkers. <laughs> she's 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 shown up to to the multiverse shit town. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Okay, so two, a green, and a blue. Uh, she comes in with five loyalty counters. Static ability of spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents. Jeez. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she has two activations. So one of them goes up one. Choose a non-land card name. Then reveal the top card, top four cards of your library. <clears throat> put all cards with the chosen name from among them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. <laughs> what a whack ability, dude. And then okay. three, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Kay. Down three yeah. to return. So obviously you've got to have some top deck n- manipulation to kind of take advantage of the activation there so you have a sense of what's there on top. But yeah. it's not like you're absent those in green, right? You and, you and I like hate top deck manipulation. Like it just there's just there's a lot available in these colors for doing this though. Like true. She, she could fit right into that. But I think yeah. even if you're absent those activated abilities, her static ability is very desirable in commander. Uh, for us. S- Sigarda is a huge deal, right? Yeah. Like Edith the OG Sigarda. Or- pretty hard to work around keeping you from sacrificing permanence which we've seen some of these some of the cards in the set saying people select things and sack everything else right she just bangs that in the butt right like she's done <laughs> uh so i don't know i i would definitely put her in a deck just just kind of for prophylactic purposes you know <laughs> Pro- <laughs> prophylactic purposes Yep, the Simic condom right here. Ira, Ira Glass, Fatal Frame, <laughs> Podcasting Planeswalker condom. Man, we dumped a lot of descriptors on the Yeah, Tamio. we'll own it. Okay. All right, is there any other Simic? That's, that's it. Those, okay, those two. who's next? So we're moving out of the, the two color combos, right? That was the last one. It was the last of them. All right, so we have one three color Planeswalker and then two left after that. So how how do you want to crack this? Do you want to do Let's let's do the color list before that. All right, let me let me hit you with Karn the Great Creator, dude, and All prepare right. your ass for this. So he's four mana, activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. Why? Uh yeah, he comes <laughs> in with five loyalty, but it says until your next turn up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to his converted mana cost. So uh, to its converted mana cost, so it's kind of like his original ability, where he kind of wakes thing, wakes up machines a bit, you know. Okay. Um, he, you can bring him down by two, and you, and you may choose an artifact, um, card you own from outside the game or in exile. Reveal that card and put it in your hand. Uh, yeah. Whoa, dude. So wish boards or whatever wish type effects, like they're kind of a. I think I think the official rule is that it's not a thing. So bringing things from outside of the game is 
not supposed to happen unless you kind of chat with the people you play with. Um, and then I guess even then, the only place you can access them from is is your sideboard, which which doesn't exist because in they don't either. exist in the format. So it's a little yeah. So I don't know about that. Um, but, but that yeah, static you know. ability, dude. So there's a lot to like about him. Um, one being that he goes into you know any color identity because he's colorless. His static ability shuts down a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, I think it actually shuts down Ashton's altar and all the mana rocks. Like they just. It yeah, doesn't I mean, these, say not mana abilities. They just can't be turned. These turned aren't on. these aren't niche cards in Commander. You'll see them at every game. Yeah, this is yeah. It'll it'll work. And then yeah, his up one is, you know, for an artifact deck. I think is where that comes into play a little more. Um, with Micah Synth Lattice, you can start killing off lands. I guess with that one. Oh. Um, but I'm just kind of parroting what his creature version of himself does because you can kind of reactivate that multiple yeah. turns. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, should anyone find a way to exile some kind of artifact, I guess, like I'm just talking about without having to visit the rule, you can bring him out of exile and bring him back into play. So okay. he's pretty dope, dude. I like um, him. Is there, yeah, I think he's pretty dope. He's pretty dope. <laughs> um, you want to hit us with Ugin? Yeah, I'll, I'll hit Ugin here. So Ugin the ineffable. Uh, six, you can't fuck him. Six colorless. Yeah, he's just like... He's unfuckable. Infuckable. I'm very, very asexual. Ugin the inf- infuckable. Uh, so six CMC. Comes in with four loyalty. Uh, static ability of colorless spells you cast cost two less to cast. Okay. Sounds pretty good. Okay. I, I know of some titans that may be interested. Yeah, I know of a certain... I'm listening. You can certain, knock on... You can solicit here, Ugin. Yeah, a certain species of, of creature that is... Yeah. Tend to be highly costed. Okay. Okay, two activated abilities. So plus one. Exile the top card of your library face down uh, and look at it. Create it. Create a 2-2 two, two colorless spirit creature token. Doesn't have flying. Does not have flying. When that token leaves the battlefield, put the exiled card into your hand. Okay, a little, little bit of work to get that card draw going. Uh, and then minus three, target permanent, destroy target permanent that's one or more colors. So, yeah. Spot removal for colored permanents and I don't know, I mean, I, six mana for that. Four, four, or for foil, four loyalty. Yeah, it's that cost reduction. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm the only place I'm seeing this is if you're doing something like Kozilek, right? Like that's probably the most logical place. Maybe I'm missing something, Andy. Yeah. Um, I mean, the art is dope. Like it's fucking Ugin. Yeah. I, I think it's cool that he destroys a lot of the other planeswalkers, I guess. Yeah. You know, if they have one or more colors, they're just gone. Yeah. See you later. Um, yeah, I don't know how to really evaluate this one. Like, I don't want to say it's bad. It's just not obviously good. And there's some places where I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'd be okay with this. In an artifact deck, like just kind of how I evaluate it, reducing their cost just by a flat two is pretty good. Yeah, so know? there's cards good. that do cost reduction by one. What's the CMC that those usually fall into? Um, Like three, though, yeah. And then like the artifact deck I have, I can run Cage Sun which is six CMC. So if I had Ugin or Cage Sun in my hand, I'm resolving the Cage Sun. So yeah, I don't know, man. I'm having a hard time with this one. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting one. Like it fits in a weird space. If he price spikes for some reason, like maybe if you and I are missing something about him, then I'm going to go, yeah, never mind. Cause we, he, we need to look into it. Because he spikes. But if he never does, if he kind of stays in like a kind of a cheaper range, there might be decks that are, that hey, he's of interest. Sure. Sure. Uh, all right. So last last card on this goddamn voyage. You... Yeah, hit me with the pinnacle, dude. Okay. Can I just say that this is probably some of the best Raymond Swan art ever? Like he's one of my favorite artists. That he's done a couple of this guy already, but yeah, damn, yeah dude, I used like, him in our this... our title image for this review because he's yeah, just man, fucking he, dope. He his art is just over the top. Um, it's Nicol Bolas Dragon God. So it's blue, black, 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 red. Um, Nicol Bolas Dragon God has all loyalty abilities of all other planeswalkers on the battlefield. So when I said that Ugin could kill him, I guess he could kill him back here because he would have the same ability depending on <laughs> the turn order. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I mean, Ugin know, who, doesn't who, isn't colored, right? Yeah, so. who gets here second is pretty much the yeah. Um, 
Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. So he couldn't get to Ugin. Fuck you, dude. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, so yeah, because it's kind of funny because on Amonkhet everything like exempted. That's exempted cool. Nicol that Bolas, right? That no matter what, when the two are out, that is actually dope. All right. So, um, yeah, Nicol Bolas, Dragon God has all loyalty abilities of all other planeswalkers on the battlefield. He comes in with four loyalty, but you can do plus one. Uh, draw a card. Each opponent exiles a card from their hand or a permanent they control. <laughs> Bring him down by three, destroy target creature or planeswalker. So yeah, he can still kill Ugin. Fuck him. Yeah, he, he um, will. And then he his will. minus eight is each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. So where does he go, though? Like, like he's a crazy, crazy card in a planeswalker-heavy environment. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh... Obviously, there's that, like you talked about a while back, there's that Nickel Bolas theme deck in EDH. Yeah, like, where it's Bolas, Bolas, Tribal. Bolas, Bolas, Tribal, for sure. Like, I, this, is, this is obviously going to be there. Uh, to, I don't know if we want to have this discussion or not, because I feel like people, it, it's a subjective discussion. I don't know if you can, anybody can come to a conclusion that's persuasive of anybody that feels, feels differently. But I feel like this is kind of why this is the type of card that embodies why I don't want planeswalkers to just all be available. Oh, as, as commanders. commanders, like ma- making that roll a thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If they ever did that, if, yeah. Like he gricks it. Like so. I I I already have a fucking time of my life dealing with Will and Rowan Kenrith. I don't even want to know. You would just be like scrapping that deck and making this Yeah, one. I would move it over to Nicol Bolas for sure, and I'd be like, you guys are fucked. Yeah, I'd be like, we have. To, it would be War of the Spark every time we played it. Yeah. You know, except for you have all the sparks. <laughs> like, it just... <laughs> uh bro. Uh, yeah, I like the card a lot. I, I, I think it is kind of one of those things. It's just a cheeky... It's a cheeky card. And even, even if you're not really betting on that static, like, he does have very compelling abilities. Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, like or, to make everybody exile a card from their hand or from or, or a permanent, like that's a big deal. And that ultimate is is the game. It's the game. Yeah, you can if you play your card if you play it right, you yeah, you can just push people out of the game or at yeah. least a couple. Well, there it is, man. We we made it through all the planeswalkers, right? <laughs> are we gonna do the other cards? Or are we too deep into? This? I think we better. I think this set's a bit exceptional because this is already like getting pretty long. Um, I think we found that doing set reviews that span over multiple episodes really hasn't been right for us, but this is kind of a crazy big set. Uh, At the very least, I think if we kind of squeeze it in, like we're just going to evaluate the rest of the cards that we think are good for Commander, ones we're excited for our decks, um, ones we kind of hope might take effect or, I don't know, like get used by the community or whatever but yeah, yeah i'm thinking that's kind of what war will go next okay um and then yeah man we're we're done we're we're done with the war of the spark stuff at that this, point this has been a hard one to evaluate right like it's required a lot of hours and we probably still got a lot of shit wrong or missed a lot of things oh I and mean, that's you know like i said in the last one don't come to us for for precision work come, we're, we're approximate come to us for approximate work <laughs> Hey, thanks for joining me and Andy for the Legendary Creature Podcast. Be sure to join the conversation. You can find us on Twitter at legend underscore creature, or you can comment on this episode on YouTube. Look for Legendary Creature Podcast there. Let us know what you think of the Planeswalkers from War of the Spark. Did we get our assessment close on some of these? Are there some things that we missed? Some things that you're looking forward to with these Planeswalkers? And yes, we did not even get around to other cards in the set that might be of interest to Commander players. So be sure to join us next week for our next episode. We'll be sure to dive into some of those other goodies that we should all be keeping an eye on. Music this episode is from the Artist Protector 101 from their self-titled album. The song is Street Trash. We'll post a link to their music as well as the music of other artists that let us use their stuff in our podcast be sure to check them out because we're super appreciative that we have some cool musicians that let us use their beats until next time take it easy and if you're going to a pre-release this weekend good luck